Hi everyone, welcome back to SNS Bioinfo. Today's topic is the explanation of the concept of dominance. Concept of dominance. In the previous sessions, we have already learned about Gregor Mendel's experiments. His monohybrochrosis, dihybrochrosis, testros, backros, and so on. In all those experiments, we could find one important thing. That is, F1 generation, all F1 generation express the dominant trait. In the F2 plants, both dominant and recessive traits expressed in particular proportion. In the monohybrochros, it was 3 is to 1. That means 75% of the plants express the dominant trait, 25% express the recessive trait. In the dihybrochroses, the F2 plants expressed both parental and non-parental trait. The ratio was 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So, what actually is dominance? Then why some alleles are dominant and recessive? To get answer to this question, we must think about gene. You know that gene is a unit of inheritance. It is a functional segment of DNA. This particular gene contains information for producing a protein. That protein controls a particular trait or character in living organism. In a diploid organism, each trait or a character is controlled by a pair of alleles or a pair of factors or two copies of gene, according to Brigger Mendel. But there are certain exceptions in some characters in living organisms. Now let's think about a character in a living organism. A character can be controlled by any pair of alleles. The alleles can be exhibited in three different forms. They are homozygous dominant form, heterozygous dominant form and homozygous recessive form. Let me write this. For example, this is homozygous dominant form. Homozygous dominant. Dominant. The next one, heterozygous dominant. Heterozygous dominant. Next, homozygous recessive. Homozygous recessive. That means any one of these three conditions can be seen in the living organism, in deployed organism to control a particular trait or a character. For example, tallness in pea plants. Tallness can be uh, either be uh, homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant. Dwarfness is definitely controlled by homozygous recessive allele. So that I have told you that, that a character is controlled by a pair of alleles. It may be either homozygous dominant, heterozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. Once again, you look at these allelic pairs. In case of homozygous dominant, only the dominant trait is expressed. In heterozygous dominant condition, according to Grigor Mendel, in a dissimilar pair, one allele dominates over the other allele. That means the dominant allele always will be dominant over other allele. So that what will happen? The dominant trait will be expressed. In this case, tallness will be expressed. The dwarfness will be hidden, will not express. Then in homozygous recessive condition, as two alleles are recessive in type, the recessive trait will be expressed in the offspring. Then let's uh, learn the concept of dominance with the help of an example in detail. Imagine a gene in your body which is responsible for producing a particular enzyme. That means a gene contains the information for producing a particular enzyme. That enzyme is required for the conversion of a substrate into a product. Substrate converts into a product with the help of our enzyme. All living reactions are true living reactions, metabolic reactions. Each reaction is catalyzed by a specific enzyme in living body. So here, the, for the conversion of the substrate into a product, a specific enzyme is required. The production of this specific enzyme in our body is controlled by a gene. A gene, the gene should 
prepare that should give the information for preparing the enzyme in our body i have told you that a character or a trait is controlled by a pair of alleles in diploid organisms here the character or phenotype is enzyme so the enzyme production is controlled by three pairs of alleles any one of the conditions either homozygous dominant heterozygous dominant or homozygous recessive which are they let us uh, assume uh, the uh, alleles for the production of the enzyme as capital e and small e capital e for dominant and small e for recessive here first one is homozygous dominant then homozygous sorry heterozygous dominant then homozygous recessive homozygous dominant similar dominant alleles heterozygous dominant and homozygous recessive any one of these conditions can be occurred in our body to produce that particular enzyme so let's uh, consider these two alleles the dominant and the recessive allele the letter capital e is known as the unmodified allele un modified allele while the small letter e is considered considered as the modified allele modified allele here the unmodified allele is responsible for producing a normal enzyme so here i can write normal enzyme normal enzyme so what happens here normal enzyme produces in the body so that normal conversion of substrate into product there is no confusion in the body no metabolic disorders or errors but in case of uh, modified allele small e this modified allele could be responsible for producing number 1 normal or less efficient enzyme normal or less efficient enzyme second one non functional enzyme non functional enzyme third condition no no enzyme at all no enzyme production no enzyme production here you look at this capital e or unmodified allele is responsible for normal enzyme production here you look at the responsibility of the modified allele it could be normal or production of normal or less efficient enzyme or non functional enzyme or no enzyme at all here in the first case normal or less efficient enzyme normal enzyme production take place the enzyme may be less efficient so that there may be some error but the phenotype will be what enzyme will be produced the same as that of the phenotype of the unmodified or dominant there is no much problem but second and third guys are very dangerous here no functional enzyme non functional enzyme means the enzymes will be produced but the enzyme will not work it cannot help the conversion of that particular substrate into product the third case no enzyme production no enzyme so there is no conversion of such a substrate into product here uh, that in the presence of this modified allele uh, that dominant this more unmodified allele explicit effect when only in this condition see in the heterozygous condition the unmodified allele explicit effect that is dominance so the effect of the modified allele will be hidden so here the normal enzyme will be produced the phenotype is same but case of homozygous recessive condition what would happen so no functional enzyme no enzyme so it will definitely affect the uh, conversion of the substrate into product uh, i i hope uh, it is uh, very clear to you then uh, the role of dominant allele here the unmodified allele is the dominant allele dominant allele always So dominates over the recessive allele. This is according to Mendelian concept only. But there are certain exceptions, certain cases that we will learn later. Then 
in case of homozygous a condition only the recessive allele expresses its effect otherwise it is helpless because it cannot express its effect in the presence of a dominant allele this is the actual meaning of dominance in a dissimilar pair of allele the unmodified allele is known as dominant allele which is responsible for expressing a particular phenotype or a trait or a character in the living organism so the other uh, that trait that means other recessive will be hidden in the nature the modified allele expresses its effect only in which condition only in homozygous recessive condition i hope it is clear to you all then with this i conclude my session then thank you and have nice moments